Alright, in this video we'll be going over the C-Shirt video tutorials. Uh, so we'll be doing a lab on uh, pretty much just using some of the string and character or string and char string or character methods uh, that we practiced. Uh, so we have, so I just have a form here. So there's a, uh, so I'm using the design window. We'll use half and half just because the layout takes a bit long. Uh, so we have pretty much, uh, actually we'll probably use more than half of the code. I'm going to access the code variables in the code, so I just drop them on just for location purposes because uh, creating the layout would take too long. So we'll do a layout tutorial still uh, coming up. Uh, just all in code, no drag and drop. Uh, so I've done a few drag and, I've done, uh, sorry, I've done a few videos with just, so no design window 100%. Uh, but pretty much we just have a text box here, so it's called, uh, password text box, camel cased. They're all camel cased, and this one is check, uh, check password button, and this is exit button. Okay, so I did actually, actually did, I did uh, accidentally click one of those. I might have to delete something in the other file. Uh, but pretty much we'll just start with the code now. So I'm using Rider once again. Okay, so first we'll have a method here. Actually, first we're going to have to... Uh, uh, okay, so we'll probably have to set up those buttons first. So here I'll say, uh, so let me take that out there. So, sorry, I'll just, uh, never mind. So let's just put that here. So we'll just say check password button. Dot name should already be set. We can just set that anyway, so we can say Check password button dot name uh, points you check password button Let's see if that works. It was already set I believe, but it was it was set in the design window here when we decided to set this text box's uh, name, which is the identifier. Pretty much, it's a name property. So it's uh, both it's set. You can double set it, I guess. So then here we're going to set up that. Oops, sorry, my keyboard keeps disappearing. So here we'll say, why is that happening? Oh, because the semicolon, okay. So here we'll just say, uh, the check password button plus equals new, uh, sorry, check password button dot click plus equals new uh, check password button. And then here we'll pass in, actually, no, sorry, check password button dot click plus equals new event handler. Then here we'll pass in a uh, check password button underscore click because that's what we're going to call the method. Okay, so now if I just go down here and say private void check password button. underscore click and here I'll pass in uh, object sender and then event args e okay so that should be fine uh, so we'll just do the same thing for the exit button here so we'll say exit button dot name points to uh, points to sorry exit yeah points to we'll just say exit button. Then we'll do the event handler. So we'll say exit button uh, dot click plus equals new event handler. Then here we'll pass in uh, exit button underscore click. 
semicolon. Then we'll do the we'll just create another event handler right underneath uh, the last one. So we'll hear we'll say your private void. Uh, we'll call the name that we put in the parameters up here. So we'll say exit button underscore click. It doesn't tell us what it what it is. Like the IntelliSense, it doesn't catch that for some reason. So then here we'll say that it takes an object sender and event args e. Okay, so those are set up. What else do we need? So I think here we're just going to have a bunch of methods. So this one's kind of long. It's not too bad, but it's uh, there's a few methods to do. So first we'll have uh, so the number uppercase method accepts a string argument and returns the number of uppercase uh, uppercase letters it contains. Private int number uppercase. So we'll say that here. Oh, we can just do that right here. So we'll say private int number uppercase and it'll take parameter string str also we'll have a local here int uppercase points to zero so we'll initialize it to zero first so we'll have a uh, no sorry uh, stay in the method here so then we'll say we'll have a for each loop so we'll say for each uh, care ch in str I'll say so what's going to happen here is that the string that we have the ch is going to loop through it so it's a trick here that we can just loop through a string pretty easily with using uh, by using a for each loop you could also use a for loop using less than the string dot length with a normal kind of like array style iteration uh, okay, someone's wondering like what the hell is he talking about? Uh, okay, so I'll just do an example of what that would look like. I think it would look like something like this uh, So for int No, sorry For care CH No, sorry, I think we actually would use an int here. So for int i points to zero i is less than I believe we would say str dot length and then i plus plus but then the for each loop is actually easier than that so let's just see what happens here <coughs> excuse me so for example we could have I think we could say str of index i we could do something with it we could say we could that's how you'd probably access it you can't modify it uh, you could probably copy something to it though but to work with it we've talked about this in the notes a little bit so this is the way how to work with string indexes we'll do some more examples with string ind indexes coming up probably maybe even here but otherwise, just back with this for each loop here. Uh, so here we have if care ch in str, and we'll say if care dot is upper, passing in ch as a param. Then we'll say uppercase. What is uppercase? Did I miss a uh, miss a field here? Oh no, sorry. We already had so we have an int up here, uppercase. So we're gonna say we're gonna increment uppercase. So we'll say uppercase plus plus. So here we'll say return uppercase.
So return uppercase. So we'll have another method. That's pretty much it. So we'll just go to the next one here. So here we'll say private int number uh, lowercase. Uh, so number lowercase. Uh, why am I having these capital? Number lowercase. I think the actual. I forgot the word for it, but the uh, C sharp. they like the the way the docs teach it is that they capitalize the methods. I don't really do that because that's going to confuse me with other important things like classes and namespaces and all that, or built-in methods or something. Uh, it's up to you. If you started out with Java, then you'll probably Java or C. Then you'll probably go with uh, you'll probably go with my way. If you start out with C sharp, you'll, you'll probably do it the way they taught you with the capital first. Then you'll be like, oh, well, well, why the hell is Java doing it that way? Uh, so that's pretty much it's, it's pretty much whatever language you you learned first. I believe Python also uses camel case as well, similar to Java. Uh, so anyway, so here we'll have. So here, private int number lowercase. So then here, for example, we're taking in a string str parameter. Then here, for example, int lowercase points to zero. So here we'll have, for example, for each uh, care ch in str we're going to loop through uh, the string and for the index 0 of the string ch is going to point to that because we could have set care val and string or whatever uh, we could have said val care care val uh, so we could say yeah so pretty much for each care ch in str so every time ch is going to point to this string index starting at zero. So then here we'll say uh, if care dot <coughs> excuse me if care dot is lower, then here we'll pass in c uh, ch. Then here we'll uh, increment lowercase. So what's going to happen is that this number is going to check how many lowercase characters we have in the password. In this case, we're just calling it str. So we're saying int lowercase points to zero. And then for each care ch in str. Uh, so then if, for example, the str is like apples, Then care ch on the first iteration is going to point to string index 0, which is a. It's going to say if care which points to a, or sorry, which care dot is lower, passing an a, because ch points to the character a, because it's a character. Then it's going to increment. So if, if it is lower, if a is lower, then it's going to increment lowercase the counter by 1, which will add 1 to the counter. Then we just have to return a uh, lowercase here at, at the bottom. So the next one will check uh, the, the number of digits. These methods are quite useful. Uh, you don't have to create your own. You could create your own, which would have a longer code. Uh, but you can the built-in ones can help you do tasks that you need to do. So here, for example, we'll have another one called private int number uh, number digits. We'll say that it takes a string str as a parameter. So here we'll say int digits points to zero. Then here we'll say for each uh, care ch in str. 
then we'll say if care we'll call the built-in function if care dot is digit passing in ch then we'll increment the digits uh, counting uh, the counter variable and then we'll return digits at the end we could have called this get digits get lowercase get uppercase count or get lowercase count or get number digits count or something or just get digits count okay so now we'll go to the check password button underscore click so here we'll just have a constant int min underscore length so we can use the constant uh, keyword points to five. Oh, sorry so the password we could say that the password's minimum length is five so here we can whoops here we can say that a uh, string password points to password text box will access our GUI element or control so we'll say password text box dot text property so it's going to read in the user input from the text box stored in the string password variable okay so we'll see what else we have here uh, we'll validate the password here I think I have this code in Python or I still need to do it uh, it's the exact it's almost the same code but there's no GUI real, there's no GUI elements in it I think I've done this in maybe a few other languages as well so here for example we can say if password dot length then we can say is so if password dot length is greater than or equal to min length then we're going to check if that's an and this is going to be a long condition so you can do this so you can say if password is greater than I usually just do it all the way across uh, like the cross this line keep I'll keep going like this some people can they want to maybe put it down I don't like putting it down I'd rather just read it across but you may see it either way so if password dot length is greater than the min length and the number sorry if so now it's gonna have a method call uh, in a in a in a condition so you can do that in like a if condition so if number uppercase passing in password as a parameter so you can do that you can pass a method call to an if statement with a parameter and get it if it has a return type so and the number uppercase passing in password as a parameter is greater than or equal to one and we'll say and and again and number lowercase passing in password as a parameter is also greater than or equal to one and number of digits passing in password as a parameter is also greater than or equal to one then we'll finally open the if block whoops so uh, writer formatted that formatted that a bit so if you want to bring them down to the next line you just say and and or or or, or like and or or and then just move the rest down with the parentheses coming down like that I don't usually do that uh, so I just do it across so then here we'll say message box dot show we'll show that a string that says uh, the password is uh, valid otherwise we could say that else message box dot show 
the password is not valid. All right, and then for just for the last part, we just gonna, we're just going to go to our exit button to underscore click, and then remember we can just call this to access the form, and say uh, this dot the close method, which will close the form. Now that should be it. I don't think it's going to run because there's something wrong with the back end code, but pretty much what's going to pop up is just this. You're going to enter something in the text box, check password, and a message box will come up. So let me just try to explain to you guys exactly what's going to happen here. Yeah, so there is an error. Uh, it's because I click something. I clicked an event handler generator. Uh, so let's just stop that. So to fix that, I'll have to go into form1.cs, I think. Designer.cs, something like that. I'm going to click this Windows form designer generated code. I'm going to look for a red underline. I think it's this one right here. Look for it. Sorry, there's no underline for some reason in this theme, which is uh, which is dumb. But let's just this one here. Let's comment this out. If it would comment it out. Any more red? Under our text, I don't see any red text anymore. It should work now, so let's just go back to uh, the form. I'll save it. Since designer savings, hopefully, it didn't glitch out. Okay, so the this exact window that you can see on the screen popped up on my screen on top of it so you can't see it. Uh, so I'm just going to enter something in that text box. I'm just going to say trees. Check and then click the check password button. It says the password is not valid. So what was the conditions? Uh, let's just go back to the code here. So the condition to check the password here when we click the button. So with password.length, we're accessing the string's uh, length property. We're, we're pointing the string password to the password text box dot text. So that's where we click, where we entered something in the text box here. So password is going to point to that text box. If password.length is greater than or equal to the min length, which is 5 which is greater than or equal to, then that's fine. This if statement will continue to be true. It'll check the next part. So if uppercase, number of uppercase letters is greater than one, greater than or equal to one, and number of lowercase, uh, not letters, characters is greater than or equal to one, and number of digits is greater than or equal to one. So I have to have an uppercase, a lowercase, and a digit, and be greater than five, or equal to five. So I'm going to click I'm going to change that text box here to something. For example, trees, capital S, 1, check password. It says the password is valid, a message box popped up. I'm going to close the form by clicking that X button there. So I just click the text box here, entered something, then I click check password. It told me whether it was valid or not. Then you can re-enter to continue, uh, then you can exit if you want. Uh, so that's the end of the lab, uh, so thanks for watching guys, if you guys like the video you can like and subscribe to support the channel for more programming and investing tutorials. In the next video we'll be going over uh, the con so continuation of learning some of these string and character methods. So thanks for watching guys, hopefully I'll, I'll see you guys in the next one, take care, thanks.